build. Um, it, I've used it myself to get to, I think I'm like gold two or something uh, at the moment, um, <laughs> which I've never, I've never really laddered before myself. So um, as a human, um, so it was kind of cool to have a build that I could just play and, and get quite highly. I could probably make it into platinum almost and I don't do any scouting or anything. And it's just an A move army. Nice. Um, so, you know, for a bot, it seemed really good to be able to just, you know, it's, it's Thor Hellbat. So, you know, there's only a couple of units to build. Um, and you just got to hope that it can get greedy and, and keep expanding and get enough economy. And then it, you know, it does well. Well, let's see how it's done. We'll take a look briefly at the, uh, scores this week. Um, so micro machine top again. Um, on the way to As winning usual. every single week. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep. But interesting, this week we had three bots in second place, uh, Spiny, Sharp and Edge, and uh, 3 Lover. Lover. Uh, Spiny, other two have already qualified, therefore Spiny will qualify for the tournament. Congratulations to Spiny. Um, Nicely done. It's like uh, the top 12... I mean, we've only got six qualifications for the tournament so far, so it looks like the top 12 might just about get in. Um, although you might make a run. Um, unfortunately, you did finish bottom this week, but like for the first week, you still got seven wins, so it's, it's nice. a reasonable start. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is funny. Like I, I thought, ah, oh, I'll put this bot on there, and it'll probably won't do very well. And I was kind of right, but then I was like, hey, I'm surprised at some of the wins it did get. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it's one of those things, you know, you've, you've got to put it out there and, and see what's going to happen. And, you know, you, you just don't know, right? You, you don't really uh, know what will work or won't work until the bots start playing. Yeah, exactly. And like, there's always room for improvement. And like, yeah. you've still got the points on the board there. So if you do, do want to make a run for it, there's still like, uh, it's still possible to get into the tournament. Definitely. <laughs> I'm well, still, I'm trying. <laughs> I, I'm still looking at uh, myself there, and I'm thinking I could just about move up, but like, yeah, I'm, yeah, it's 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 tough, isn't it? Because uh, you know, you make one change, it could be for the worse, not for the better. So yeah, um, yeah, it's it's, it's tough. Exactly uh, mean. <laughs> it's tough to make that decision about what you're going to change. Yeah, yeah. So um, should we take a look at uh, one of the replays anyway? Um, sure, absolutely. I think actually, should we go for the one first perfect split first? Because uh, sure. that's quite a nice one, I think, to start on. Um, yeah. So I do if you uh, if you want to just load it up and then pause it at the beginning. So yeah. Should have, uh, perfect split. Warned you about this before we came on. And that's fine. But yeah, so you were one of the <laughs> very early people who brought who came into the scene, uh, sort of like virtually from the beginning and started mm -hmm. using a lot of the player C2 framework. Um, yeah. So yeah, you made, made a lot of nice progress on that. So uh, is, is that something you're still using? Or? Yeah, I'm using it a little bit. Um, I found when I started with Py, uh, Python SC2 um, that it wasn't very, um, like, you know, a lot of the code for running games over and over and over again uh, it didn't work or a bit fiddly and I haven't really had the time to mess with that and um, a little bit more comfortable with Pi SC2 in terms of taking the data from the game and feeding it into the algorithms for machine yeah. learning and that sort of thing. Um, so that's, you know, so Pi, Pi SC2 seems to be really good for that where you need to pull the data out of the game. Python SC2 is obviously very good for the scripted bots and where you kind of, yeah, it's a, a little bit more like, uh, you know, build here, do this, if this, then that. Yeah. Um, so I think each has its uses and possibly if Python SE2, if I can get that, you know, if I really need to be able to run, say, 10,000 games, uh, yeah. you know, at a, at a time, if I can get Python SE2 to do that, then possibly I'll shift some of my um, my code over to that because Py SE2, they seem to have kind of, you know, since Alpha Star did quite well and, you know, beat a bunch yeah. of GM players and all that sort of stuff, they've kind of eased off that. So I found that they're, they're not really reviewing a lot of the code and they're not really merging a lot of things or making a lot of changes. So cool. the only way for me to move ahead with Pi C2, I think, would be to pretty much have my own repository and, and run it yeah. off that. So Cool. Yeah. So I think we're ready to go on that. Um, sure. Going in three, two, one, go. Okay, so starting up in the top left, um, 
Yeah. Like Do you have a lot of so, 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 yeah. yeah. So so what's your basic strategy here? Is it just kind of like uh it, do you have more it's a very greedy or? build. Yeah, it's it's a very greedy build. Um, it's it is just one build, so um, it's essentially a Hellbat Thor build. So the first thing it, it likes to do is get gas and um, pump out four tanks. And once it's finished with the tanks, it's pretty much going to to, to do Thors and, and Hellbats. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, it gets a lot of gas early. You know, uh, when you build when you when you've got a mech an army you need a lot of gas so um what it'll do is actually it, it prioritizes uh economy over everything else so it's always uh got an scv queued up in the command center um and it's always got um three workers on each gas and it always tries to maximize the gas at every base so uh and it'll go up to 80 workers or so and then pretty much just build units from there uh, cool. So, yeah, so it's it's very greedy. It's very much about the economy. So uh, it just likes to expand and um, take over the whole map. And then um, when it reaches max army, then it likes to attack. So it's got a little bit of logic in there to defend um, and, you know, kind of keep the yeah. bases protected. But, um, you know, mostly it's just sitting around waiting to max out so it can attack so are you using sort of like any other frameworks for this or is this entirely something you've built from scratch this is just python sc2 so i'm not using say the sharpie framework or anything like that cool. um but python sc2 is quite good I've, i found it um it's it's actually structurally and log logically quite similar to pi sc2 in terms of obviously the code's different and how you interact with it is different but the conditions are all the same you're still checking uh do i have enough minerals uh you know do i have the tech tree that i need for this uh and so on but it's it's quite cool and and handy to have it um you know you can say expand and it just finds the, the closest expansion and and goes or you can yeah. say build a you know build a barracks here or you know in this case the barracks is on the wall and you can say you know is there a ah, sorry on the ramp so you can say um you know give me the ramp yeah. location and it gives you it so that's where it's a lot easier than pi c2 uh in pi c2 you're essentially you could code that stuff yourself um but you know i was typically just choosing specific locations yeah um which to some degree i'm, I'm tempted to do with python sc2 uh you know in terms of um building locations like you can see the factory here is essentially I'm just using the the logic that is in a lot of the examples um, where it just builds the um, the structures towards the map center. Um, but you know, in order to fill the bases on a lot of these maps, you know, you can you can fit a lot more factories uh, in the bases. But because of the limitation of um, you know, kind of the yeah. logic that I had at the time, I build two factories at each base. So every you know once it finishes this second factory at the at the first base it'll go and start building factories at the second base instead oh, nice. yeah whereas you could see there's a lot of room there for more factories and yeah um yeah so it, it's certainly and, a lot easier with kind of like terran to do that than it is with kind of like protoss definitely like you've not got any requirements yeah. like protoss it needs to be near a, a, a kind near of power. Like power and zerg needs yeah. to be on Crete. it's like yeah just yeah. terran's just build wherever <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of lucky like that. But then you know, there's a little bit of um, funky logic. Um, for example, the factory. Uh, I would like to be able to say choose a location for the factory that already has enough room for an add-on. Um, but yeah. you know, the default out of the box logic is, can I build a factory? And then when you want to build the add-on, it says, oh, I can't fit the add-on now. I've got to lift it and land it like it just had to do there. Yeah. Um, so you know, it's kind of funny to. You know, you know, you can tweak it yourself, but yeah, it'd be nice to be able to say, I want to build all these factories in places where there's an add-on and potentially space them away from each other so my units don't get trapped, you know, yeah. in between all the, the buildings. Yeah. No, it's, uh... but, but it's amazing how quickly you can get going with this stuff. Like, 
I oh. think I built I built a Protoss carrier bot in like forty five minutes, and I'd never used Python SC two before. Yeah, um, I did see the uh, video you made of that. That was actually uh, really mm -hmm. interesting. Um, mm. So. Yeah, it is, it is <laughs> it's kind of frustrating and, and fun at the same time. Yeah, uh, it is kind of a lot easier than C++ framework. Um, but like, maybe, yeah. maybe I'll uh, I'll switch to using that at some point. But it's just <laughs> it's one of those things, you know. Um, programmers tend to like their languages, and and if you're, I mean, Python has a lot of the functionality in terms of um, typing and that sort of stuff now. Yeah. Um, but you know, people. I mean, I program in like any day, on any given day, I can program in three or four or five different programming languages. So I'm yeah. used to context switching, but if you're very heavily focused in one language or another, it can be very difficult when you, you jump into Python and you, you know, you're using C++ commands or for me, yeah. it could be JavaScript or it could be PHP or it could be Java or like, oh. you know, <laughs> and I'm constantly typing the wrong thing and then going, why isn't that working? Oh, right. I'm, I'm in Python now. Um, I know. So it can be, <laughs> just it can just be today, I, I had to go back to programming Java for the first time in about six or seven years, and I looked at it and goes, "Oh my God, what's happening?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think that would be the biggest shift, especially if you were working with Python. Yeah. You'd then go back to your other languages and be like, "Oh, you know, so, so why is can, it not working?" What we can basically agree on is using Python is cheating, right? <laughs> to some degree, it is. Like, um, it's funny that the three main languages that I use are Python, JavaScript, and PHP. Um, and all of them are like cheat languages. All of them have the ability to not really have types, although I yeah. tend to use types in, at least in PHP and, and JavaScript, I use types quite quite heavily. Um, but you, you can get away with, you know, not really doing things properly and it yeah. generally works. So yeah, you don't have to be strict about things, but if, you, if you're not strict about things, uh, things can explode and not quite do yeah. what you think they're going to do. So, um, you know, yeah, it comes it down to just like, like a developer. Yeah, it's just basically different tools for different jobs, isn't it? And yeah, some respect, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, everything has its purpose and Python is very heavy in the machine learning data science uh, yeah. area. So um, it's useful to be able to use that and... I, I sort of feel like the performance isn't necessarily always that great, but um, in the end, it doesn't really matter. For these bots, they're not really making super critical decisions and um, they've got the ability to take a little bit of time and make some decisions, so uh, yeah, it, it works pretty well. Yeah, it's too much of an issue, especially given the uh, back and forth to the protocol as well, which generally takes a lot mm -hmm. more time. So. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that the guys with um, have done really well with Python SE2 is they've um uh, they've cached a lot of calls you know one of the biggest problems i've found with python is if you do a lot of loops like say you're looping over all of the units in the game to find you know all the thaws or whatever it happens to be uh it can be very time consuming if you're doing hundreds of loops in each game step yeah um oh here we go we've got an attack yep, coming in there we go all i was just looking at it like eight and a half minutes and not a single unit's dying but that's gonna yeah yeah it changes very out. quickly so it's funny the um, the Thor is actually going to high impact mode, but I think one of the cases where they should be using the, the splash damage mode is against these yeah. units. So um, unfortunately, that's just the build is just to chuck them all into high impact mode. Um, but I, I have been tempted to uh, adjust the logic there to to have them change out if they see a lot of muters coming. So it looks like you just about got this under control now, right? but yeah. I think, like, uh, Thor's are pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, especially against yeah. Mutus. Like, yeah. I've seen all the Zergians just rush through that. Yeah. But the, yeah, the Hellbats here with the blue flame, the, they, oh, they shred yeah, those they, Zerglings pretty quickly. Uh, that's basically just having them on arm. Yeah, exactly. And this base is now going to be a planetary, so it'll be able to defend itself yeah. uh, in time as well. I kind of wish there were more like planetary upgrades. I know you can get range, which I think uh, might be researched. It depends on. As as uh, a Protoss main, I am very glad there isn't. Just to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if there was an anti-air on a planetary, oh, that would be the end of the 
that then then Terran might actually win a few uh, a few more tournaments. I would say. Uh, please no. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's my one wish. But that was pretty. You know, it's funny how few Thors you need to defend a position, especially if you're reinforcing, and yeah. you can see that the eighty workers means there's a really good amount of uh, economy here, um, and so the main thing about the vibe build is to keep pumping out units uh, and, and to be able to re-up. So that's why every base has a whole bunch of factories on it. Uh, and so, you know, you'll see that as, as the army supply gets sort of depleted, very quickly there's a new army behind it. Yeah. Here comes another attack from there. Oh, and the yeah, same, the same, same uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I think you've got more from here, but you haven't got as many uh, Hellbats in the most. No, no. But it looks like the entry fortress might just make it. Oh, I think it's going to go down. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yep. Um, the uh, force are coming back over. Yeah, they get a little bit um, they get a little bit trapped. You know, there's there's lots of nice little glitches where the, the units don't know where to go and they just run back and forth, as, as we've seen on many times on many bots. Um, so that's, it's one of the toughest parts of the logic is to, to get these things to go in the right direction and, and commit to something and stay there, I think. Yeah. Well, just looking at the units lost tab, like you've got 256 Zerglings and 41 Muters killed compared to four Thors yeah. and four Hellbats. That's, uh, that's quite a nice ratio for you there. <laughs> And have a look at that. It's at 200 supply at the end of that. It's oh, just got yeah. attacked with pretty much everything that the Zerg had, and yet it turns around with 200 supply and starts attacking. Yeah, you normally you think, oh, I'll, I'll move in because I've just depleted their supply. I'm not a full supply yet, but no, the Terrans no, at 200. 200. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And still, you know, 78 workers and this is scary. 70 workers. Got yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, and that's the thing about Vibe's build is it's it's a very strong A move army, yeah. um, but it is very greedy. So <clears throat> I've noticed, you know, it's it's not necessarily the strongest against the early um, the early aggression, the early attacks, and the early harass. Um, I, I've made a few tweaks to this bot since since this game, since, you know, since this yeah. was played, and uh, they haven't really helped. So. <laughs> Uh, you know, like a wall off the main, which helps on the early aggression, but um, doesn't. You know, the economy seems to suffer, so there's still the unit composition is is more of a mid to late game composition. So yeah, um, but like know. in this game, you got to eight and a half minutes with no units lost on either side. At that point, you're pretty much golden against this comp. It's exactly. Any any um, any enemy that allows the you know the, the max supply to pretty much uh, you know. So all the Thors and Hellbats to reach max supply is, yeah. is probably going to lose. Um, yeah. so it's, it's kind of fortunate that in this case the, the Zerg allowed the uh, the Terran to you know run away with it to some degree. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, I, I think Perfect Split is one of those bots that uh, benefit from a bit more early aggression. Um, mm -hmm. It looks like it's kind of trying to do the same thing. It's trying to do a, a, a long-term economy build, but then it goes in with wings and muters early, which sort of seems like the opposite of what you would expect. You would think it would come in with some high, you know, some more tech like gas units yeah. and that sort of stuff. So um, kind of tech and that kind of thing. Um, exactly, and lurkers and stuff like that. Because because yeah. lurkers lurkers are horrible for. For yeah, this Lurkers, army, because Lurkers doesn't yeah. really kind of like fit the way Perfect Split tries to play the game, it tries to be very mobile and like, get around the map mm -hmm. a lot. So yeah. I think more Brood yeah. Lords would kind of uh, augment that a little bit. But, well, they're, so. they're also Brood Lords are still slow, right? So yeah. uh, and even Vipers and that sort of stuff, they're not the quickest units. So potentially, it, like you say, if, um, if the unit composition, if it's trying to be quick and it's got a unit composition that favors that, it really should probably be ta attacking early. Yeah. Especially with links and you know, as soon as it's got go for early link speed potentially and start harassing and and you know disrupting the workers and. Uh, you know, that would probably have a pretty big impact. So, you've killed 476 Zerglings in this game. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, right? You know, as soon as yeah. you got these, uh, as soon as you got the, the Hellbats out, they, they shred stuff. And then, you, in this case, the tanks, I've been surprised the tanks seem to last a long time. Um, 
you know, they never siege up. They just, you know, roll around. But for some reason, they seem to just last a long time. So I've got to speed this up. Yep. Um, yeah. And it's looking for the uh... doing doing the little dance. <laughs> Going back and forth. It's got some code that uh, as soon as there's enemy units or buildings within the range, we are trying, trying to expand and it comes back. So. Ah, yeah. Well, that's a pretty yeah. fun one. That, um, that was good. Yeah, no, it, it done really well. Um, yeah, so... Uh, I don't know. It, it's a nice little first game for you there. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of like, certainly Perfect Split is, is pretty much, like I said, suited to your unit composition. It, it works very well mm -hmm. into that. Um, so, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, definitely uh, one to have a look at. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. So... And I don't know if there's any code specifically in there to deal with kind of like the uh, muters or anything. Is it is it just kind of like something that you might kind of like put in there? Or um... yeah, it's something that I'm considering. <clears throat> it does no scouting. <clears throat> Excuse me. It does no scouting. Um, it yeah. you know it's just doing the same build every time. So um, all I can think is you know it goes for the uh, I can't remember the name of the upgrade where it allows the Thors to change between modes more quickly. Yeah. Um, so it, it researches that and it has that. So potentially if it sees a lot of muters on the screen, it could, I don't know, do 50% of the Thor's change or, you know, something like that. Um, that's one of the things that I've been considering uh, just against yeah. muters. So we have a request from chat, uh, which wasn't mm -hmm. in the plan, but they want they want me to show you the match with uh, you versus Sentstar. Um, okay. I don't know if we want to do that. <clears throat> um, sure. Let me have a look. So I'll uh, grab that one quickly. Uh, do you want me to send that to you? Uh, yes, please. Uh, hold on. I'll send that over Discord. I haven't actually watched this one yet, so uh, I'm not sure exactly okay. what it's going to go on. It's going <laughs> to be a surprise for me as it is for you. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you've got that, I'll load it up. Yeah. Just a minute. Um, but yeah, so I think... Uh, Oh, for some reason, the names haven't been set in here. Um, I think that's something to do with the way that's set up. I'll have a look at changing that. But yeah, so th this this one is... Uh, normally I watch over the matches very quickly first to check what they're like mm -hmm. and everything, but this is going to be a, uh, a, a kind of like very uh, surprise to me. But yeah. Sure. Okay, I'm yeah, just loading it up now. So, so when did you decide to like first make a bot um, for the ladder? Is it just something you've done recently? Because you've been around sort of like for about pretty much since we were starting. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've I kind of got into this in was it middle of two thousand seventeen. So, did you want to start this game and then I can ramble on a bit? Okay. Yeah. Um, I will put that on. Going in three, two, one, go. Okay. Yeah, so I guess, yeah, mid-2017, I think, was when I first got into this and, uh, you know, when when Blizzard and DeepMind kind of announced they were doing their little collaboration. And and since then, I've always been messing with the uh, machine learning side of things. But, um, yeah, I guess recently I've been working with ES Champ quite a bit and trying to build the tutorials and noticing that there's a lot of activity to do with building bots and, and laddering the bots and I've always wanted to do it um, and the machine learning side of things has been fairly slow and difficult so um, you know once Python SC2 had really matured uh, I think it makes it really easy to build a bot so uh, I kind of messed around with that uh, I think Laddie kind of was pushing me come on man you know you've got to get to check out these other frameworks and so on um, and then, yeah, I was surprised at how quick and easy it was. So, uh, you know, once I was able to, to pump out a couple of bots quite quickly and I figured out the logic was fairly similar, and then it was like, oh, I can actually, um, you know, I can actually do this. I can actually get a bot on the ladder. And I knew it wasn't going to do very well <laughs> uh, early on, but uh, I think you've just got to get things, you've got to get it out there, yeah. right? It's the same as as a human when you're laddering. You've just got to play the game. You've just got to get into it. and Oh yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, that's you know, and then once you start playing, you start learning, and and uh, you start tweaking. And I actually find building 
the scripted bots uh, suits my personality more than laddering myself. Um, you know, I like the ability to stop and think and analyze a situation and then go, oh, this is the change I should make versus when you're playing and your heart's racing and you're like, you know, and you miss everything and, you know, yeah. you're not making the greatest decisions. So, yeah, when, when I really someone's enjoy attacking that. you like at four places at once, and you're like, <clears throat> what do I defend now? <laughs> yeah, or, or your build's just not going to plan. And, oh, I forgot. Oh, now I'm supply blocked and oh, yeah. I forgot this upgrade and, oh, and then everything just goes, you know, sideways. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot easier when you can go, oh, I just watched this replay and my bot sucks at this. Now I can make this change and I can just run it again and there's no stress or pressure to, uh, yeah. you know, you, to, you're not to losing. have things work. You're not using MMR if your bot loses, essentially. Well, yeah, least, well, not, you know, not when you're testing anyway. There's still a little pr bit of pride at stake, but um, but yeah. that's fine, you know. It's and I think that's the thing is the the thing I've learnt about this StarCraft Two bot community is it's full of great people and they're supportive and you see yeah. in chat, you know, all the the bot authors are talking to each other and helping each other and um, being really you know, supportive, even if their bots talk trash, um, yeah. you know, the authors are, are pretty good. And, and that's one of the amazing things I've found about the community is, yeah, everyone's just so helpful. And, yeah, it's, it's been yeah, really they amazing. They spend a lot of time. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of people that are on there that actually help other people out. Like, sometimes to yeah. their detriment when they knock them out of tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think probably to some degree the benefit is there's not a lot of money at stake. So, yeah. um, you know, it kind of keeps things nice and and people are happy to help each yeah. other. So, and, and that's something I noticed because we were in our like season, I think season five tournament, uh, where we had the, uh, well, basically we had some sponsorship from Nvidia, which gave out some uh, some nice graphics cards, and everyone was getting a bit mm -hmm. antsy then. And I'm like, right, okay, let's, yeah. let's take the money out of this. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I mean, I think I think it's good to have what you've got, which is this, you know, non. Yeah, I guess it's competitive, but it's not really fiercely competitive yeah. and it kind of allows the community to, to grow. And then there are competitions that offer money out where people can be a little bit more, you yeah. know, ruthless, I guess. But they'll, they'll sneak in some changes and they won't tell anybody or whatever. And that's fine. You know, it's all fair. So, yeah, I, I like the, the combination. I think once the uh, community starts getting bigger and like, I think sort of like at that point you might get like a bit more. But at the moment, mm -hmm. I'm very happy with how it is right now. So, yeah. yeah. But, well, I know with, uh, well, I've heard with Brood War, there are a lot of uh, big companies involved in building some of the bots. Uh, and I don't know if they're all in, still involved anymore, but uh, yeah, it's interesting yeah. That, to see that they probably weren't that helpful to each other. Uh, <laughs> you know, so when they got uh, a lot I mean, of the pride degrees, of the company at stake. Like, I think sort of the cider uh, uh, was uh, not very helpful at all. It came in for a single mm -hmm. tournament to to prove itself and then <laughs> kind of left and i think there was a facebook one as well which i think uh, those guys were yeah. certainly more involved in to start with so they were sort of like helpful but we see yeah. some links coming in the links yeah. <laughs> oh, that tank's gonna go sorry <laughs> and and the the trick here is that the because we're still trying to build out the four first tanks um there's not a lot of other units to combat this it's just tanks uh, and they, the tank sieges up even if it's right next to a Ling that's about to pop it. So, uh, yeah. And for some reason that Ling's being able to get away with this is just out of range of the, the tank on I, the I ramp know. there. But the Ling it's, is attacking it's the perfect. command center. <laughs> yeah, it could just pop that tank and be done, but if it, yeah. I bet you if it moved over one pixel, it would probably get, get shot down. Oh, ah, yeah, by this other one here, yeah. Yeah, oh, and here comes oh. another tank, and... We'll see if this tank is a moving or just moving. It looks like it's, no, just, it's just moving. moving. <laughs> it's it's oh. watching the turrets there, but it's uh. It was a bait. Yeah. It was meant to be yeah. a bait. <laughs> <laughs> it did that on purpose. Yeah. Definitely. I've actually changed the logic for the tank so they a move now <laughs> because I found that they were just rolling into position in a bunch of lings like that. Yeah. No, that's... So now you can see. Um, I think there's one last tank, but now there's some some hellions coming out. So. Yeah, really early on when it's trying to pump out those tanks, uh, this bot's very uh, vulnerable, I guess. Yeah, I think uh, oh, these a lot links more links might coming in. Shredded. No speed though, so that's kind of pretty tough. And that looks like that third 
Third, yeah. fourth base? Third it's base third is base, uh, yeah. pretty vulnerable. Although... That might well go down. Let's get this heavy yeah. over here. So that, that should, by the logic, that should be a um, planetary... Oh no, that's going to be a, an orbital because it's the third. So in any case, it's going to be pretty vulnerable. I think it's uh, pretty vulnerable. Do you have any logic in there to lift it? Or... No. <laughs> it just gives up. It just says no. Ah, it's yeah. alright. Yeah, take that one. It's... It's too um, it's it's too difficult at this stage to deal with like the fact that there's a, a base that's in the air and trying to yeah. build that with the, the tech tree. So um, at the moment it just gives up and, unless those things die. Yeah. But once again, once those lings run into tank range, they're kind of it's very very vulnerable there. Yeah. yeah but there needs to be here yeah, some hellbats to to save the day. But there definitely needs to be a bit more hellbat yeah. uh, defense here. But I do notice you've still got the uh, huge worker advantage there. Like, there's only 18 workers on the <coughs> side of uh, Saint Star, so that might be a problem. For yeah. You. Uh, yeah. It's it, as long as the uh, um, as as my bot can survive this early pressure, then it will usually come back and and win. Um, because I don't know how much you've laddered, but uh, everything up until like Platinum League, uh, they tend to people tend to, you know stay on one or two bases and have maybe 20 workers and then they get so caught up in the micro that they forget uh, everything else so and then it looks like this factory is going to burn down because there's no logic to uh, repair um, and it looks like the third base is going to get stuck there so um, I think you've just got oh no you've, yeah. you've not got any logic to get the uh, worker to, to, to resume the build It'll it'll still probably pile up a bunch of SCVs at that base. Uh, I've oh. since adjusted the logic to just cancel those buildings. Um, it was easier to just cancel the building than to try and figure out how to resume it. At yeah. least at least in the five seconds I had to kind of look at some of that logic. Um, but the beauty is that it's going to pump out a bunch more workers hopefully and um, max out and then say you know what I need to uh, I need to go. And Build another base. Oh, there we go. The base got destroyed anyway. Yeah, it's so, so kind of so lucky. Yeah, probably gave you a, a favor there by killing that base. Yeah, <laughs> and it's funny, isn't it? It's funny when you're building your bot, yeah. like how often the other bot can actually help you. Like if your bot is stuck and it can't figure out where, where it wants to attack, and suddenly the enemy will appear at a different spot, and you're like, oh great, now you know, it just sort yeah. of unlocks everything. It's yeah. Now I can carry amazing. on with my build order. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's good to it's good to see things get unstuck. And look at the the economy now is starting to really ramp up. Yeah. For, for my bot, so um, if it can just hold out a little bit longer, I mean, there's no there's 16 workers on the Zerg side, and yeah. so there's not really enough economy. There's no speed like link speed. Link speed would have probably done the job right here. I mean, it would have been done ages ago, and yeah, it would have made a huge difference. Yeah, uh, and a second base, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no there's no gas uh, taken by the Zerg at all. So um, no. pretty limited sort of build here. You're unlikely to get Zerging speed with no gas there. Yeah, uh, but you and as the finally, upgrades start to kick in, it looks the, like you uh, might finally just get this third base up. Which, uh, yeah. Yes, it'll be fine. It'll get there. Yeah. And that blue flame doing wonders. Oh yeah, and then I think the the attack upgrades are, are coming through. So it's interesting yeah. that Sentstar is is building these uh, spine crawlers here. Um, yeah, well, I haven't shown any aggression yet. No, so. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess if it had uh, if it, if it was getting attacked by lings or even marines, it would probably yeah be able to defend itself. There we go. And I've noticed that with the worker distribution, oh, yeah, the, one of the uh, one of the gas buildings there lost its SCV, so that'll be stuck forever until yeah. until it gets attacked. Oh. Uh, but the re redistribution of workers is built into Python SC2 is is quite good, but also a little bit funky sometimes. You see yeah. the, the gas workers will sometimes get a little bit wigged out and keep shifting until until the base is saturated, and then it's fine. Yeah, it's something that the C++ library doesn't do very well either, or well, doesn't do right. at all. So, yeah, you have to pretty much code that yourself. Although, yeah. I have to admit that I nicked the code from the micro machine to do that. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, that's well. fair. Is, yeah. Are they open source? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's all open source. Yeah. yeah. So. 
Yeah. It's so I think this is uh, probably a good example of um, where even even early lings, you, you see that if, if you're macroing behind, uh, you can eventually get to the, the point where you've got a good advantage. Yeah, oh, that's good. Alright, I think uh, we're just waiting for you to attack. What's your uh, trigger for attack on the spot? Um, about 190 supply, give or take. So uh, you can probably fast forward quite a bit. So you basically went wait to get to full. Um, yeah, I will fast forward just, just slightly because uh, it looks like these are just going to send a few zerglings in every now and again. So. Yeah, about 13 minutes or so it attacks. So. Uh, there we go. It's coming across. And there's not really much to defend this. Uh, yeah. Two, two limbs at a time isn't really much of an army against no. even even the three two or three hellbats at the front will uh, deal okay. with that without too many issues. I don't think your uh, your, your spine cores there are gonna do much <laughs> So uh, they're gonna last a few seconds. Okay, well that was interesting anyway. Uh, yep. Never let it said that I don't play to the crowd. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I I think I think link speed could have been all the difference. Just that one upgrade early in the game would be enough yeah. to uh, to take it down. Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, but obviously, with no gas, that that would have probably slowed that down a little bit as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, right. Okay, should we take a look at the one versus additional pylons? I'm not sure. Uh, sure. How much time you have? Because I know you said. Uh, Oh, I'm fine. Ah, I can, okay, I can go. Yeah. It's the beauty of working from home is there's a little bit of flexibility in terms of the, yeah. the hours. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, I'm ready. Okay, going in three, two, one, go. Okay. Right. So, how's your uh, TVP? Uh. Mm, Terran is, uh, sorry, Protoss is probably the trickiest one um, I've found. Uh, yeah, it's, it, there tends to be a little bit more, uh, you know, DTs especially. Any any, yeah. any cloaked units, I've got nothing to deal with that at the moment. Um, yeah. And as we know, Skytoss is OP. So, you know, it's one of those things where as soon as I see a game against um, Protoss and, and, you know, yeah. this kind of... There's so many different strategies with Protoss as well, like because mm -hmm. you've always got to worry about the Cannon Rush and Dark Templars mm -hmm. and Guy Toss. Yeah, yeah, and I personally can't even deal with the Cannon Rushes properly. I just I find them so aggravating and frustrating, and yeah. Uh, so yeah, I would love to be able to build a bot that perfectly deals with the Cannon Rush and uh, shuts it down. Because if you can defend the early cannon rush um, and deal with it properly and you've got an economy behind it, then you, you pretty much come back that Protoss doesn't usually have anything to back that up. No. Um, so, yeah. So, so long as you get enough units early on enough and just run up there and kill mm -hmm. them, it should be fine. Um, yeah, and the, the problem is going with a mech build, uh, you don't have a lot of early units, so that's where all the weakness is. So Potentially one of the, the shifts that I could do here, obviously walling off, um, that's one change that I have made uh, in my latest version, but um, yeah, having a few more bio units early, even even a few marines that could just take out, you know, a probe that's around the place, a little bit of scouting, yeah, the, you know, it doesn't do any scouting at the moment, so you could potentially scout a little bit around the low ground, around the base, just to check to see if there's any pylons um, or you know, even around a large base like this, if there's an area that has no vision, um, yeah, that that would probably help defend against the the pylon rush. Yeah, um, uh, I, I think the the biggest thing you can do against a, a pylon rush is just to get workers down there to deal with it. Um, yeah, it, it's the same with Terrans. If you catch the uh, if you catch a proxy early enough, just go down there and take take it out with your workers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In this case, fortunately, the Protoss is letting me um, yeah. build out a little bit. Uh, but that is the weakness of, of Terran to some degree against a Protoss. If you, you know, Protoss is, is pretty good when it gets um, a good economy going and, um, you know, has some yeah. pretty strong units. So you really have to 
be more aggressive with a with a Protoss, I would say, and and really attack. You know, because they've got the ability to to Chrono Boost the uh, the Nexus and pump out a bunch of workers, they can um, in their economy can ramp up very quickly. So yeah, you, you probably have to be able to get in and attack uh, early, disrupt that that those workers, maybe disrupt some of the technology and. Yeah, at, at um, least manage to get a few worker kills quite early and then go for Yeah, there, just really. to peg them back yeah. a little bit, you know. Uh, at the moment, yeah, 30 versus 26. Uh, if you could bring them back down even to about the same uh, or maybe a little bit below, then you're yeah. probably going to do a lot better. Yeah, some early pressure is always good against Protoss. Well, against any race as well. Yeah, absolutely. So if, if you kind of like thought about kind of like doing some kind of early kind of like pressure attacks, or are you just kind of like using yeah. spill now? Potentially, I think probably the next move. I'm following the the vibe tutorials, uh, or I, I want to try and follow those as faithfully as I can. And uh, essentially, the the, the next um, advance is is scouting. Uh, so getting a, an early reaper potentially um, or even just sending an SCV out and scouting and using that information. So yeah. um, I think that'll be quite complicated trying to observe what the enemy is doing at a certain time and kind of making a decision, uh, you know, in this case, potentially seeing that the Protoss had an expansion and going, well, that's great. I can, um, I can expand and, and kind of, you know, build up my economy as well. Yeah. But, then also go well potentially against Protoss. It needs to pump out, I don't know, Bio or Reapers. You know, yeah. be good to have a bit of re some Reapers and some Reaper Micro to get in there and take out some workers. So yeah, it's something I spoke with a lot of the bot authors about, and it's like the complication of scouting is not just to actually go over there and scout; it's to actually use that information properly. Yeah, because um, I could easily yeah. send a Reaper around and have it not really ever die, but then yeah. you know what do i do with the fact that i've seen anything like <laughs> <laughs> exactly. the decision points are yeah. pretty complicated and, and that's where it comes in because all three races have different kind of like points that you need to look for and you kind of mm. have to think about all of this and then obviously yeah. if, if people know what you're doing they'll try and fake you out with various stuff um, it's, it's also about the timing right like so when you scout at a certain time then certain things yeah. are possible but then you have to keep scouting and keep seeing what they're doing um to see what you should how you should respond so yeah and it gets progressively uh, harder a lot of the time yeah so, yeah um I'm, protoss make it nice and easy by just having an observer you can just put around like, yeah that is pretty good like even sending one, an yeah. overlord out you know, as yeah. a, I know it takes a while for it to get there, but having an overlord that can see a few things is kind of handy. I mean, Terran can just send their barracks in, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, in this case, it doesn't use it, so it might as well just fly it over yeah, and get some vision. Yeah, yeah it, it, that would actually probably work. I, I've uh, noticed you've got the uh, Hellions sat right underneath the observer here. Do they know that observer's there? Are they trying to... It looks like they're sort of, moving. Yeah. Um... So they must it know. Does an observer show up in the enemy units list? It if it does, do, yes, then... but it will show okay. up as cloaked. So, right. So um, well, that's probably what it is. They're, they're attacking that location because they know something's there. Yeah. So that's what I've probably got to adjust uh, in the logic there. Yeah. Uh, and, that, and that's the thing I don't have is is like if I don't have anything that shoots up, everything will still move to that location to try and shoot up. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those tricks of the. The logic. So yeah. But yeah, they definitely know it's there. You can see it's a uh, A moving the ground there. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Have a little dance. That would explain why they're uh Yeah, it can it can wig out sometimes and not know where to go because it's just yeah. it actually I think I've programmed it into ignore uh workers. So that, that probe there, uh it'll just ignore the probes, you know, going yeah. into the base. Um, and here comes an army. What Oh, look at this. Oh, Sky Toss, that's, Immortals. That's, oh, you're going to have problems with this. That's, that's a tough, tough army. Yeah, yeah, especially with the shield up. Yeah. yeah. Something I mean, the but timing's all right in terms of the Thors. Yeah, the Thors are just popping out. There's an, another one in production, maybe? No. Another tank's doing significant amount of damage there as well. Yeah. The Thors are amazing factory. against Tempests. Like... Yes, although you get enough tempests and there's nothing yeah. going to stop them. So yeah, yeah, those tanks. Lucky, like I, I, essentially, I made the logic for those tanks. 
go to the um, go and stand by the command center and then go and stand by the one of the gases. Yeah. And it just makes a good on pretty much every map. It makes a good spread, so it's it's kind of lucky. Yeah, but that's cool. It looks like they're trying to attack again, though. Um, yeah. I know it's I'm in immortals. A weird position for your next base over here. Yeah, that's it. I mean, that's, an, that's just using the expansion uh, logic. So I have been tempted to go in and choose some specific expansion locations for each map because, you know, I would tend to expand horizontally down one side of the map yeah. um, a little bit more, um, whereas this logic tends to look for the closest uh, expansion location, give or take, which tends yeah. to be more of a diagonal uh, kind of expansion around around the map yeah I've and yeah there's additional pylons is also doing exactly the same so that's uh, must be something in the same, API. yeah same logic <laughs> and here comes the army what have we got three three tempests three tempests three yeah. models is that yeah, yeah. four models even um, yeah that's so a pretty and look at these workers just getting shredded no logic there for the workers at all no. And the Thors are kind of snagged on that. Yeah. They're, they're, oh, they're stuck on the, the on the oh, observer. On the observer. Yeah. <laughs> if if I could just scan or get a raven out. Yeah. I've been tempted to get a raven out because I think it'd be easier than the scans. The the um all of the orbitals yeah. are actually focused on dropping mules as much as possible. Although, yeah. Yeah. And they've got some so. Thors coming up from behind as well. Oh, yeah. They are shredding these tempests. They are pretty good against them, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Like you but, about yeah, it's, I think the tough part is that expansion. Uh, yeah. You know, if this is a thing, if, if um, I had the logic to build some more factories at home, I would probably have like six more factories right now. So I would probably have a lot more, you know, in, yeah. in production. The, um, the minerals are, and gas are really, you know, stacking up. So there's room for a lot more units to be produced here. That uh, that isn't being taken advantage of. So, so uh, young was saying in chat that he plans to move to locations to expand on the side. Uh, his body just skips the natural sometimes. Oh yeah. But, uh, so that's something <laughs> to have a look at. Uh, yeah, uh, I've, yeah. At least with the limited map pool, to some degree, it's fairly straightforward to, yeah. to um, code in the locations. Um, there's also some logic like not trying to expand when there are enemies at the place where you're trying to expand to and uh, not streaming SCVs across the map, like, you know, potentially yeah. streaming them through through a safe location or a defended location. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the, the other thing is this is an A-move army, so uh, it doesn't split to defend. One of the things I'd like to do is make it so that it will... Uh, yeah. ..do a decision based on what the enemies units are so that if it's got if it's attacking if i'm out you know if all my units are out attacking across the map and then i get hit at home if it's just a couple of little units then just send a couple of units back home yeah um to defend well, rather than sending everything army, yeah. yeah and i've i've kind of got some logic that says don't come back and defend if it's only a couple of units but that can be some pretty strong units that shred yeah. your your workers and destroy you yeah so this is uh Interesting. Another here. wave. I wonder if, uh, yeah, in so the warp prison, a bit more scary at the moment, especially at this uh, base over here. Yeah. Planetary will do a little bit of work there, but um, the problem is those immortals can shred the planetary pretty fast. Unfortunately, the um, the Thors are doing the dance. Yeah. They can't figure out whether they want to attack that uh, observer oh. or whether they want to. Oh no! I want to go and save that base. Yeah. So I think good. I might have to. At least I know there's some logic there I can fix. Yeah. I guess <laughs> that. A learning experience, we'll call it. It's amazing. Like, I've just I've watched a handful of replays. I haven't seen this one before. I've watched a handful of replays, and every time there's like a, a long list of things I, I need to change to improve. Yeah. Unfortunately, losing that base, but it's an opportunity to get a better lo located expansion. Yeah, you got, so, got one you know, over here now by the, uh, the silver lining. <laughs> by the nine o'clock base, yeah. Unfortunately, the um, the Protoss has got a very good economy right now. It's yeah. got a lot of upgrades. 
and uh, it's got a lot of units. Um, it's got an army that counters anything almost. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's, yeah, it's kind of like zealots and mortals are pretty much uh, are great <coughs> against Thors. I think the problem here is, uh, honestly, like I think the biggest problem is the Thors are doing the dance. If the Thors yeah. had moved out, they would have been able to defend a lot more of this, and they would have um, the economy for my bot would have been a lot stronger. It would have. Yeah stayed with a maximum amount of workers and it would have had a lot more expansions and upgrades and so on and then it could just move out and start attacking. Yeah, but unfortunately the little dance is uh, the catch. Yeah, and now you're getting uh, mother ship fleet mother ship. everything invisible. Yeah. Which is pretty much impossible. Although the mother ship itself is uh, at risk. Down. Yeah. Yeah. There's Thor's pop mother ship pretty quickly. Down. So watch out additional pylons. Okay. As soon as I figure out how to not try and attack observers, I think yeah. uh, I think I might, you know, that might be my next change. I might prize a yeah. few more positions on the ladder. Oh, hopefully. <coughs> and I know Ketrox in the chat and Ketrox Banshees, cloaked Banshees, uh, are my nemesis at the moment. So uh. that'll be my my next move. Yeah, so uh, Ketrox was the other lot of the ladder this week, so he's done really well. Um, yeah. He's uh, just going to be, again, lots of, uh, lots of room for improvement. If you can, manage to uh, get up a couple of places, you might just make it to the corner. Give it a shot. We'll see how we go. Um, I, I always like getting a tune for the underdog, so if I can be the underdog and cheer for myself, then I'll give it a shot. That's all the best, you know? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so just don't win too much because then you become a favourite and then it's like you just have to That's start right. yourself or something like that. Yeah, and then everyone guns for you. You know, I don't want to be Micro Machine. As long as I'm not as good as Micro Machine, or at least I don't appear to be as good, Yeah. Uh, then everybody will just keep going for Micro Machine. Yeah, so I'm just going to fast forward this to the finish. Now. Yeah. I think uh, it's a predetermined maybe. outcome here. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think without that, let the bug of just following the observer around, you would have probably uh, had a very good chance there, not one it. Yeah, I think so. Absolutely. Cool. But yeah, that was a really fun game anyway. It'd be a tough it'd be a tough fight with those uh those Thors. Yeah. I think the timing of those Thors, you know, as you could see, the Protoss kind of sat back and let me build up my economy and then yeah, if the if the Thors had come to defend, I think the the Protoss would have um you know, because it seems to attack in waves, so potentially if the timing was right of, of my Thors to move across the map and um, you know I mean, start attacking. The, the big problem there is immortals generally tend to do really well against Thors, so mm -hmm. um, if you can take those out or if uh, you can get rid of those in big enough numbers, then you should be okay, I think. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that, that's normally my go-to unit when I see the opponent building Thors. It's like, okay, just bump out some immortals. We should be fine, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see how it goes. It's, um, once you get enough Thors, uh, there's not a lot that can stop it, really. Yeah. So should we take a look at the uh, game against Tia quickly? Uh, sure, absolutely. If you've got time for that. Yep. Um, <coughs> so just the, uh, the last one. Give me a shout when that's uh, loaded up. I'm good, yep. Cool. Okay. Uh, going in three, two, one, go. Okay, cool. Tia with his normal, very, uh, very polite bot. Tia, always like yeah. that. <laughs> I've I've added chat messages to my bot now, um, yeah. so it does does GLHF and everything at the beginning. Uh, I just and, uh, I just use Monty Python quotes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I have been tempted to tell like really bad StarCraft two jokes or StarCraft jokes. Yeah. Um, but I've got to, I've got to go and get a list. Uh, uh yeah. I, I think yep. me and Doctor went through a whole bunch of them, like in the uh, tournament. Like, right. you know, 100 Marines walk into a bar, there's no counter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Fair enough. Yeah, no, I like, I like those. They're, they're the perfect, they're, the jokes are so bad that you, you, you laugh, but you don't want to. Yeah. And that, that's, that's the right kind of joke for me. So, yeah, it's hideously like bad. Don't worry. All yeah. Right. So, so basically, you have a very low bar with which to, uh, with which to <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> yeah. Well, the good thing is bots don't really have a sense of humour, so 
You, you can just tell them saying? this is funny. Are you saying yeah. that my bot does not have a sense of humour? Because I'll tell you, it's the funniest bot ever. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's a, yeah. It's it's your sense of humour being portrayed through the bot, so that's uh, that's fair. They don't know what's funny or not. So this is the thing. You can just say this is what's funny, and it yeah. thinks that that's funny. And so you can, if if you had robots as your audience, um, you could do quite well, even if you weren't funny. Uh, so yeah. Well, at least we'll have jobs as stand-up comedians come the robot rebellion. That's right. Yeah. As long as we as long as we teach them all the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So another another Protoss here to deal with. Yep. Uh, yeah, expand, expanding around the same time. And it's quite an early expand for Protoss, I think. So it doesn't look like he's going for any early aggression. Maybe not. Interesting. I don't know whether Chrono Boost, whether the, they use the Chrono Boost on the, on the Nexus or whether they use it on other buildings here. Yeah. I think it's possibly on the... That wouldn't have been on the gateway because it's not enough out yet. So yes, it would have been on the yeah. uh, on the Nexus. Because normally, I think Chrono is what is it? Fifty energy or yeah, fifty energy. Uh, so yeah, ideally it would be using it right now. Yeah. Normally, uh, Chrono isn't that useful on an early Nexus, but I know a lot of bots just think, is there a, something in production at a building? I'll use a Chrono on it. Uh, yeah. But yeah, well, I've really... I've been experimenting with a Protoss bot building one, and yeah, I Chrono boost the Nexus, and then the amount of workers you can pump out is kind of crazy. You yeah. can you have more workers than you have time to expand with, and <laughs> you know you can't you can't really do anything with them. So yeah, unfortunately, by that point, the enemy has a bunch of units in your face, and workers aren't that good. Against <laughs> so it looks like a Stalker Immortal build going on here potentially. Yeah, the Robo going out there. I noticed he likes to um, rally all his units to the main base, but then takes them off somewhere else. Um, I wonder if that um, pylon location on the natural is specifically chosen right in the middle of the, the, the choke point yeah, there. Yeah, I think it is, yeah. So the idea yeah. is that you can build kind of like shield batteries or or anything around there to, to ward off any incoming sort of like uh, pressure. And the gateway and the cyber core, are those protecting against a reefer jump there? I don't know if that's... I think so, yes. Right. Um, so all the locations are very specifically chosen in this case. Yeah. Although it's possibly would have been better to have like another pylon at the edge there. Uh, so mm -hmm. reapers don't come up. But yeah. Obviously. It's no... a pretty, pretty good little reaper wall there. Yeah. <clears throat> but then, you know, you can just run up the ramp. So, <laughs> but yeah, this is a good map in terms of you don't have to defend too much against the Reapers. There's not a lot of uh, access points. Yeah. A uh, little, little one in the natural there, but um, yeah, some some of these maps have huge Reaper ramps. So, you know, the, yeah, you've got to build three ones. or four buildings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and that, and that would be the thing too, right? Choosing a build based on the map would be, um, you know, in that case, if you, if you knew a map was a good Reaper map, you would yeah. want to go reapers as much as possible yeah i'm not aware of any bots that actually do that at the moment um i, I know a lot, a lot of bots choose their builds based on their opponents but not necessarily based on the map mm. so it's uh, and that's an interesting thing you know like these i have seen a lot of people do that they oh, I, I won with this build or i lost with that build um and yeah it'd be interesting to see you know adding a little bit more complexity to that oh, i won with this build on this map but i lost with this build on that map but you know yeah um and being able to work out i mean in theory it shouldn't be that difficult to do but it's just a case of uh, no it's it's probably a case of data right you know running yeah. enough games to to learn and then of course everybody else changes their bots in the meantime and you've trained it on how things act at a certain point in time yeah, uh, it's a lot easier training against the the inbuilt AI, which is what I do a lot of the a lot of the time. Even for building this um, this bot here, you know, running it against the inbuilt AI is obviously the easiest thing to do. But then you know, it's built just for the inbuilt AI, which has its own weaknesses and um, you know little yeah. quirks. So yeah, inbuilt uh, AI is not always the uh, strongest of opponents, unfortunately. Mm, um, mm. But there are plenty of other bots you can download and just run against everything um yeah absolutely but you know this is the thing you, you, there's so much there's so much variety i think in the way that the these bots on the ladder work that 
um, yeah, it'd be very tricky to have one rule that works against everybody. You really do have to customize it against, you know, specific opponents and potentially specific maps. Yeah. Um, like, especially for, uh, for some of the higher ranked bots, they'll have various different strategies just within the same bot. So, mm. um, uh, we have like. Oh, I don't know if you saw that, but the observer just got shot down at the third base. Yeah, that, because that's I've got good. turrets up. And I think that's probably going to be the saving grace of my bot here because I could see that the um, that the Hellions were trying to attack the Observer. Oh, and good. now the Observer's gone. They're just, for some reason, they're just jumping around between the two expansions, but that's fine. That That's uh, – they're kind of yeah. – by pure luck, they're kind of defending the middle ground there. Well, I think it's it's looking quite good for you just purely on the fact that we've got to like 6, and, six minutes 45 and there's just that single Observer's gone down. There's no mm -hmm. been no real pressure on either side. And I've got the worker lead, which uh, having a worker lead yeah. against a Protoss uh, is, is a pretty good thing to have. He's got quite a strong army, so if he were to come across with his entire army right now, he'd be in a lot of trouble. But yeah, luckily, I've got, what, a Thor, a couple of Hellions, and a Hellbat, so... Yeah, although you've got a lot more in production now, so it's getting better. Yeah, uh, it's and the other thing is, if I can get up to four bases and five bases and they, uh, the enemy attacks those bases then um, it's yeah. kind of a those will be planetary fort fortresses so the first three are always orbitals yeah. uh, so if they attack into planetary it buys me time to bring my units across and um, yeah it's kind of handy yeah, so one, why are they one, one tactic it, that um, I thought about doing was like a, um, a, a planetary fortress rush to start uh, Build a yeah. fortress over the other side, run, land it in the middle of the opponent's base. Like I've seen that happen. I, I love the idea times. of building a wall of fortresses around the enemy, yeah. uh, and then if the only thing, and yes, okay, this would be to break everything. But if you could lift a fortress, even if you had to, like, if there was a time to like unbuild the planetary, and then rebuild it again. You could do yeah. like a giraffe walk style, you know, planetary <laughs> blob walk, a hippo walk or something, uh, you know, across the map and just have a wall of planetaries that they have to, you yeah, know, constantly so attack cool. into. I, I think the, uh, the, the the strategy is you, you build like a command center, uh, lift the command center and then plonk it in the middle of the opponent's base and then start building the planetary. And then do it, yeah, and then try and do that with four or five of them at a time. So yeah. kind of like the... Uh, the uh, cannon rush tactic where you, there's too many built in production that you can't knock them all down and yeah. eventually you're going to lose just to a the sheer volume of, of cannons. Yeah, so I think like if you look at the army now, you've pretty much caught up in army supply uh, mm -hmm. compared to Tia. So he's still amassing yeah. his army. And look at look at the income. Like the income is massive there. So yeah, that's, that's fourth crazy. base, fourth base is ready. The SCVs are redistributing. Um, the upgrades we've yeah. got one one already so and again you've gotten up to uh, oh. nine minutes into oh. the game and just a single uh, observer two observers down how, how did he shoot down that observer <laughs> I think how did he see it? it it got the missile turret right there oh in the turret yeah. range oh, yeah. beautiful yeah that was quite nice um, yeah fewer luck I mean if I, it wasn't for that I'd, I'd probably lose this game <laughs> <laughs> So I think uh, tier, if you if you if you uh, change this bot uh, to not fly the uh, the observers into turret range, I think it'll do better. Yeah. So I think we've got uh, an attack coming army. from tier straight into the planetary fortress. Yep. Do you have any uh, logic to repair it? Uh, not in this version, but in yep. the latest version, it'll pull I think three workers to repair the planetary. Yeah. So those, Look at those. Oh gosh, Thor's a good, good little line of Thor's there. Yeah, they're but just shredding everything. That's amazing. The Immortals are doing a pretty good job there. Like, yeah. uh, but there's m there's more Thor's coming. Like every time one goes down, another one seems to appear. It's and just that income lead you've got is is just yeah. oppressive at the moment. And now the now the army supply, yeah, well well ahead. You're getting up towards your uh, your attack condition. Yes. Pretty much there, I'd imagine. I did. I, I have made a, another couple of changes too, where um, I I was attacking based on my supply being above, say, 190. I think it was, which yeah. is just about to hit. Um, and but then uh, I made a decision that it would 
attack based on the supply that was actually finished because as you know when units are in production they increase their supply um but of course they could be quite a way out so what ended up happening was i'd have a few when you when you have enough bases and enough factories your supply reaches 200 very quickly and then you know but only if a handful of units are actually out in the field so it would have moved them across and then all the new ones would come out and then they'd run across and yeah. it wasn't as strong as the the full supply army yeah, yeah, so I've made it so it actually counts the, the units that are on the field and then uses um, that as the measure of, of the attack. Uh, okay. The other thing that I've made it do is um, it clumps the, the army together. So instead of all the units being all spread out and all over the place, uh, it will make sure that if I think something like more than five units are outside of a certain radius, then it will get them to clump together before it attacks. So. Yeah, it's like winning this fight anyway quite handily. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Those stalkers are doing a pretty good job. A lot of the Thors have pretty low health, so... Yeah, those Thors can one-shot the stalkers, though. Not a problem. Yeah. And if you look at it, you're still on 186 supply. It's, yeah. it's pretty good there. <laughs> it, but it does have a condition to retreat back home when it falls below yeah. a certain level. Um, although, um, and that's the one thing where... Vibes, uh, vibes tutorials are sort of like just a move your army, and if they die, they die, and then just pump out new units. Yeah. Uh, in this case, I say, no, nah, maybe I'm just going to send them home uh, and send them back out again. Yeah, that, that's one more. of the biggest failings of a lot of bots is it will just start sending one by one quite a lot of the mm -hmm. time. So, I think so, so the idea with the vibe build is to mass a new army at home and yeah. then let the one, ones that are out there die. So. I'm, I'm tempted to try that because I think it would help in some of these situations to just put a bit more pressure on the, the yeah. opposition, you know, take out some of their workers, take out some of their expansions. Yeah, it'd probably be a good idea, but I don't know. A lot of the time as well, because Thors are quite slow, they'll get taken out on the retreat as well. Yeah. Um, which can be a problem. And that's the thing I've learned is... Um, Basically, never just use move command. You should always use attack. Yeah, you always use <laughs> <a> move. <laughs> yeah, because it's uh, oh that that nexus is so close. Oh. There we go. Yeah. Oh, that was pure luck that that nexus goes down. Yeah, I think uh, you might be a couple of seconds behind. Me, but yeah, that's uh, okay. yeah. That's, uh, just just pure luck that that nexus the the, the Thor targeted that nexus. Result. I think we've got another bunch of Thors on the way over. So this might be the uh, killing blow, I think. That's the beauty of this. Like you think, oh, okay, it's going to go back, and but before you know it, the you know the the army's out, out two hundred supply again, and out they come. You can never rest. That's right. That's where economy helps. Like what's it on now? S yep. Six bases, probably moving up to a seventh base. So yeah, I just saw because like the Thors were coming across the map, and then suddenly one died, and then it all came back. Sure. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Yeah, it's a little bit strange, isn't it? Oh, and now they're ready again. Now they're fine. I think it's still chasing this little observer, maybe. I don't know if it has. And there looked to be a few glitches in this um, <clears throat> in this version where the, and I've noticed this where the one of the factories doesn't have an add-on, one of the bases doesn't have any factories. Um, so there's still a few little glitches that you can see around the place where. Yeah. Yeah, I think. There's, there's oh, lots of improvement, I think, more bots, so... Yeah, absolutely. But, yeah. I, I was surprised how quickly those uh, Tempests got... I mean, they are pretty weak against the Thors, but the Thors yeah. seem to have a pretty amazing range as well. I think, like, uh, Tempests still have a, a longer range, but I think it's kind of like a bit of mislike roll on that. Yeah, look at that one. Oh, wow. Yeah. That went straight down, yeah. Yeah. I think it goes down to just 24 army supply on the Protoss side now. Yep. Uh, you're up to 192 still. And this is where continuing to pressure would actually be yeah. just stream across the map essentially. Uh, so you're going back. But that's. Yeah. There's a final push coming. Yeah, I think so. I don't yeah. think the Protoss can really hold the next one. Um, it's yeah. down to just a few mineral patches as well. <laughs> 32 out of 4 on there. And yeah, no more units. Yeah, no economy, no yeah. units. That's yeah, a... exactly. 
That's the problem with StarCraft 2. That's right. Money to build shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so yeah, I, I think the, the key there is that the um, if, if my uh, bot has the economy or can, can get to an economy, then it's almost uh, indestructible. Um, but if it gets attacked early or, you know, if it gets stuck on an observer, observers are the weakness, let's put it that way. That's the, that's my, my current standing. Wow. Uh, if you want to beat my bot, just put, put one observer anywhere outside of turret range and uh, you'll probably beat me. Yeah. I get the sense that that bug won't last very long. Like, watch no. <laughs> so. I'm just trying to bait everybody into it. Come on. Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, so I think uh, I pretty much went through the game here. I'm going to fast forward this to uh, let your uh, Thor's do the clean-up job. Awesome. So it looks like this uh, Tempest went down so fast. I think you're pretty yeah. much one shot at it. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess. It must take about four Thor shots to take down a Tempest, so yeah. it seems like the, the shields go down by half, and then, you know... You've got a lot more than four Thors. Down. Yeah, I'm surprised, though. Yeah, I? yeah. I don't think Thor's have this bigger range. Yeah, well, I mean, it's high impact mode. I don't think that increases the range, but it should... Yeah, I think it yeah. gives it 11 damage or something against air, so... That's um, pretty good. They, yeah, I was surprised at the range there. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, I must say that you've made a, a really good bot for a new bot on the ladder. Uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah. There's not many that have come on and like uh, made, made an impact at the top straight away. Um, you're obviously not quite there, but a lot of room for improvement, but still a really, really solid bot there. Yeah, I'm, uh, I do. I am surprised when I win against um, you know some of the bots that I think are probably the top. You know, if if I win against somebody who's in the top ten, yeah. <laughs> then I'm like, oh great, you know, and then. Uh, I, I beat Ketrock, uh, and I thought, great, I've beaten Ketrock. What, what what happened in that game? And I watched the replay, and his bot bugged out and didn't build yeah. anything. Yeah, I, I think so. I, saw I was like, oh, well. it's, <laughs> it's like a 15, 15 or twenty minute game. What's what's happening here? And uh, yeah, it's just because that's how long it takes my bot to max out an attack, and that was it. Yeah. So. <laughs> I think we've seen a few games where, like, if you hit like the eight minute mark and, and the units lost tab still at zero zero, you're in a pretty good position right there. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so. it, if 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 I don't get to eight minutes, yeah, the game's like, like I've seen a lot of six or seven minute games where it's like, okay, yeah. yeah. Obviously, there was an early aggression and didn't deal with that very well. Yeah, like I say, room for improvement. But yeah, yeah. Yep. So I think that's just about everything we have time for. But um, cool. But yeah, thank you very much for coming on and thank you for getting up so early in the morning. Uh, thanks for having me on. It's <laughs> How been, is it in the future? It's been fun. <laughs> oh, it's good. It's uh, I mean, the sun is just coming up here, and uh, yep, it's still got to stay home today. And unfortunately, I've yeah. got to do some work. So you, you, yeah, you, I can't tell lucky. you the lot of numbers or anything. Oh, damn! You're lucky where you yeah. are that you actually have sun. So it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's it's heading it's heading into what almost into winter now, and um, we're still getting like thirty degree days. So. Um, yeah, it's very interesting at the moment. I'm actually quite glad of that. I'm not, I'm not like a 30 degree heat person. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not a lot of people are. We get, a, we get a lot of humidity here as well. So most people were like the combination of heat and humidity. It's, it's pretty gross. So, cool. uh, yeah, when winter comes around, everyone, but you know, it, it'll be, it'll get down to 24 degrees and everybody will be wearing, you know, all their warm clothes <laughs> and like that. And you're like, yeah, yeah you get acclimatized to it, I guess. Anyway, it's been great talking to you. Um, thanks very much for joining us. And I think I better let you get back to your work. But yeah. Sure. Uh, thanks, thanks everyone for, for tuning in. And we'll see you next week. Cheers. Bye.